So today's one should be quite interesting. I've already been told not to call it Bozo, Bozo, what did you call it? Bozozoku. Bozozoku. <laughs> I've been told it's an, a Kaido racer, not Bozo, Bozo, I can't say that name. <laughs> Banjo Kazooie, Bozozoku. <laughs> this is Finn's Mark II. Let's check it out. This one's going to be interesting. So this is my friend Finn. I asked him to come down today with his quite, well, it's definitely out there, Mark II. So, sir, how are you for one? I'm all right. I'm Th good. Thank you very much for being on here. Um, tell us about your car, man, because it's, uh, it's pretty unique for UK roads anyway. Well, uh, yeah, uh, it's a 1986 Toyota Mark II GX71. Uh, picked it up about 18 months ago, bought it from Japan. Um, yeah, I've got a... Uh, I based this livery off of another um, uh, Kaido racer in Japan. I spoke to the owner and he uh, basically was like, oh, I asked for permission to like do this in a way, kind of like ask if it's all right. And he's like, yeah, go for it. So I went and done this crazy shell livery. Um, we've got, well, RX-7 oil cooler on the front because uh, that's the style. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they like to do over there. Uh, 14 inch long champs, small three piece wheels, always good choice they are a serious choice of will yeah. for like for this car man I, oh. I love long champs so this uh this shell livery before we move on like we've got to have a quick quick look at this like does the guy base it off of a race car in japan is uh, it like a yeah so what, what a lot of people like to do is base it off of like old like 70s and 80s race cars like silhouette race cars in japan stuff like that i think this has got i don't know the exact car this is based off but it's got some inspiration like from like old Toyota race cars, there's like a few of them out there. Cool. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, it certainly, certainly does stand out. It's uh, it's hard to miss. Yeah. Well, that's part of it as well. You got to stand out. Yeah. You've got to look the part. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So, is there is there many exterior mods on the car other than the the RX7 oil cooler or? Well, is it... no. Just the well, you got the chin spoiler and the oil cooler on the front, and that's about it. I wanted to go put the duck tail or something on the back, but. Yeah, haven't in, got to in, that yet. In due time. Yeah, 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 cool. So this car does have quite a uh, controversial mod inside, and yeah. I'd like to just talk about that yeah. and explain it if that's okay. Right, this is my PVC roll cage. Um, it's not going to save me in a crash. It's it rattles and squeaks when I drive down the road, <laughs> but it's a style out there, and um, I'm so, trying to just be authentic. Yeah. So is this something they do do over in Japan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll common they'll commonly put these cages in these style of like, well, this style of like Kaido Racer or whatever. I'm not. I shouldn't say it's a Kaido Racer. It's Kaido Racer inspired. Really, I don't okay. know. I don't want to kind of say it's legit because it's it's not in Japan. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, it's built just, in South End. Yeah, it's built in South End. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. it's, it's really d different, man. Like, it's different. And that's why I wanted to get it on, because this is a style of car that I'm not that clued up on. No, no, no. Um, I love my Japanese imports and stuff like that. And there's stuff I want to just point out that's kind of like normal yeah. car stuff. So, for one, these seats are like something out of a 70s TV show that might be 18+. plus. Um, <laughs> you've got on the dash as well, if I just point that up there, this like purple cloth. And is that kind of like part of the... Yeah, the style so of the that's called a chinchilla like dash mat. That's a bit of a style as well. Yeah, cool. Choice. Cool man. And there's another thing that I've noticed that I really like. Number one, I just want to put the camera around here so you can see. Frameless doors. Killerless, yeah. So High cool. Top. So so cool. And it's got this. Did you fit this? It's like some weird. What these these chrome? Yeah, like this. Yeah, no, they're they're standard. They're a standard like wind deflector, aren't they? Yeah. So these cars. Um, they're kitted out as hell like so this is a 1986 car it's got brake foot brake pad wear sensors it's got auto lights it's got um so it's got like 
like anti-hijack central locking so it'll lock on 10 mile an hour stuff like that it's just like really kitted out for such an old car like yeah so it's got quite it a lot like of... an escort and it's got like barely got one wind up windows <laughs> so it's quite a well specced car from the is it an 80s yeah 80s yeah 86 yeah. 86 wow yeah that damn japan were ahead of their time really <laughs> weren't they like yeah, when they knew comes... what they were doing and um, what suspension do you run on this so i've got uh s14 hsds on the front modified to the original hubs and then uh, I just went and chopped the springs on the rear. I think it looks so wild. When you followed me up here, I was like, damn, it looks cool. Yeah, a uh, stainless uh, shotgun style exhaust. That that's, uh, was fitted in Japan before I got it. It was, was it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Love that. And how long have you... Uh... In fact, we'll ask, I'll ask that question in the car. Yeah. Um, while I've got you, I also can see these this back shelf yeah, that we've so, got yeah, here picked up these speakers yahoo auctions got a deal on them and the uh, flash ball as well again like i like to buy a, uh, spend a lot of time shopping in japan <laughs> for this car but oh, yeah I'll, see, I'll show you that if you like yeah yeah do it <laughs> do you know much about the the history of the kaido cars oh, is it? basically it started from like the Bozozoku culture with the crazy motorbikes with like big exhaust and big seats and like Larry colours and stuff like that. And then I think it like kind of developed to like cars. So it's like, they yeah moved towards like Kaido races. So it's like, and like, I think a lot of inspiration is from, I don't know if you like, they're called Decatora trucks. Right, okay. In Japan, they're kind of like. The seven and a half ton things. Yeah, they, they've got like loads of chrome, loads yeah. of lights, crazy designs on the side. Yeah. And like they'll they'll do things like put like chandeliers inside <laughs> and like pearls and everything. But yeah, like they just they. I think the 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 idea for the inside of the car as well is to make make it a bit like lovey dovey, like you know what I mean. Like see when you get your bird in there, <laughs> it's supposed to be nice and comfy. Yeah. And like looking looking cool. So well, Japan your... are quite liberal with with sex, aren't they? Like they they have no you know they've got love hotels and yeah, like they, little yeah, like they, they they really like they really. Uh, open with it in a way, like OBA wooden steering wheel. OBA. Yeah. It's got a uh, American Monster. Yeah, it came with it. Uh, I don't know. It, I don't know what they were going for. I thought it looked pretty cool, so I stuck with it. Yeah, I think it, it suits the car perfectly, man. Yeah. Can you uh, pop the bonnet for us? So we can yeah, have a little yeah, look yeah. at the power unit. Oh. Oh, there she goes. So what is this? A one GE. One GE U. Um, it's. Probably at the factory about 120 horsepower. Lucky if it's triple figures now, you know. Really just gutless. <laughs> and it's a, yeah tied to like a three-speed auto gearbox, so it really doesn't move. <laughs> just makes a load of racket and goes nowhere. Well, it looks cool, man. Let me get yeah. a little clip of this in here while I've got that. Open. In the front of the Mark II, we've got some serious 80s JDM vibe going on here. I love the, the look of this thing, man. Um, what's the favourite bit about it? Uh, well, for me, it's this Kenwood stereo, I reckon. I've just fitted it this morning. Let's have a look. Can you, t can you make it do anything? Is it like... Yeah, I can, well, I can make it play some music and flash some lights, but don't want to get like a strike, do you? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, if I, um... I like to meditate. I be higher than a bird. I like to live it. Oh, was all up on the dash. It was just so interesting because it's so different to what we're so used to, I guess, now. Like... Yeah, it's just lo loads of buttons everywhere, like just. Oh like, yeah, what is all of that stuff? Well, that's uh, that's just your fan, your AC. Oh, okay, cool. The AC motor fuck like cooked itself on the A12 <laughs> the other oh, day. Yeah. Oh mate. And you got a Picari sweat drink in there yeah, too. Yeah, little authentic. JDM drink. <laughs> authentic JDM. Yeah. Right, cool. Um, I'm gonna sit down now in this uh, super what looks super comfortable seat, and uh, we'll go for a little drive, yeah. You guys like the new microphone setup as well, C Spanner with the new DJI on. We were on both cameras over here, so hopefully it looks good. Uh, first time we're using it on camera. So, previous to this, you had an S14. Did. And you have imported both of these cars yourself. Yep. Um, how hard was the process initially? Uh, realistically, um, it's not that hard. As long as you've got somewhere to put the car, it's pretty easy. Yeah? Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool because I've never imported my own one and it's I've always gone through importers just for ease, but I guess you save money doing it this way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've saved a bunch on this car and the last car. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. I think it's really sweet that you do it yourself. Um, I really need to ask, though, going from a S14 to this, how does that, how, how does it feel, like, going from a car that's like a sports coupe to this lazy boy 
four door saloon. Uh, it makes me miss an SR20. It does, yeah. yeah. It does, yeah. Sorry about this, guys, if it sounds free shit. So you do miss the SR20, yeah? Is it just that you miss? Do you miss the power? Like, do you do you still love this car as much as you think you would if you'd never had that? I'm just curious from someone that's got an S-Body and I can't imagine selling it to go to like a Chaser, for instance. <laughs> so I love, I miss like the turbo flutter. I miss like being able to just pop a skid wherever I like. Um, yeah, just, I don't know, it just, it's, it's two different, completely different feelings. But I mean, I love, driving this like just cruising and, and all the looks I get with how crazy this looks but yeah I don't know I just I'm, I'm a bit like it's a different kind of attention sort of thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. everything what's your favorite thing about this car because i'm going to tell you what mine is straight away how comfortable these seats are <laughs> these are like the comfy i thought my peugeot had comfy seats but oh boy toyota were winning in the 80s on these uh, i just love the overall style of it i love uh i just i uh, i love yeah i mean i love the interior as well i love like all the chrome over everything i love it's just a crazy style I can make out of it like it's a it's a completely different way to modify cars I think to what come on little car <laughs> gosh she's a goer <laughs> yeah, mate, giving it all she's got, all she's got. <laughs> what's your uh, future plans with it do you have many uh, future plans on board with the build or anything like that or um, so I'd like to do a few more kind of visual mods on the outside and then look to widen the wheels like relift them a couple extra inches and try and go for a manual swap as well oh, okay. And a, uh, okay that's kind of cool yeah and a twin cam engine as well get a bit more power but they are going to be way down the line way down the line interior is absolutely fantastic in here i'm not sure about this roll cage i keep bumping my head on it <laughs> <laughs> um, i don't even know if we can call it a roll cage but um yeah, it definitely is it. part of the style for sure. I, I understand, but uh, not sure how I. F <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'd put one in my car, no, but um, no. but yeah. Do you get much uh, negative reaction to that? Like because it's such a oddball kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I have. Um, yeah, I've got. I've had some negative responses on Instagram, but I mean, not everyone's going to love it, and that's fine because it's not meant to be loved. It's. I don't know, it's just supposed to just be out there and ostentatious and not everyone likes that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and also it's yours. I think mean, that's like something that gets lost a lot in uh, modifying cars, especially nowadays where social media is such a large part to play in everything. Like, even if you don't have a social media profile, someone else might upload it and then people are talking about you, you know? So um, I'm very much for the individualism and modifying stuff how you want or whatever you want to be inspired by. But um, I think when they are like an out there mod like that, you probably have to expect a little bit of questioning more than anything, right? Yeah, absolutely. I just think, I think that just, yeah, definitely just don't always be, try and be original. Just, just go out there and just do something crazy. Cause like, I mean, you see all these Ford Fiestas and Corsans and they all look like the exact same as one another. You just, I don't know, just go out and do something mental. Definitely. Definitely, man. Well, I love the style of it. I love the ethos. I love some of this interior stuff, man. Um, I think it's so cool. Uh, but I've, I've been over there. I've been very, I've been one of the lucky ones that's been able to go to Japan and experience some of the underground culture they have. And yeah, it's definitely the sort of thing you might see driving around Tokyo or Osaka or, you know, it's that kind of kind of car, man. And I, I think it's really interesting. Um, is there anything in your mind that in the future that you would replace it with? Do you I'm always looking at other cars, like, I can't help myself. I've, I've been looking at uh, RX-7 FCs. Oh, so have I. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. But yeah, I don't know, I think I think this is one I'm going to stick with for quite a long time. Cool, man. Well, it's definitely out there, and I hope that anybody that does see it at a show takes a picture, kind of has a look at it, and just appreciates it for what it is. Um, I think it's mad that it's got all these, like, like standard parts on it from factory in the 80s, or the like you were saying about it. I think it's so cool that it's so specced up. But, um... Just, I don't know, yeah. Just, it's just so kicked out such an old car. 
I, lo I love it, man. And uh, thank you very much for bringing it down. I do appreciate it, dude. There we have it. Have we learned something today? A Kaido inspired Mark II Toyota. Classic Toyotas are appearing on the channel quite a lot now, and that's because I've got quite a thing for them. And uh, thankfully, now it, I say it, the weather's getting better, it's freezing today and very cloudy. But now the weather's getting better, more of them are appearing out of the garages. I hope you've liked it. Make sure you drop Finn a little follow over on Instagram. His name should be somewhere on the screen. Uh, subscribe for more if you liked it and give the video a little share. You uh, might help us get a few extra views on the channel and who knows, someone might find a video they enjoy. But yeah, wow. In person, this thing is so cool. And if you can get to a meet or show where he's gonna be at, I definitely advise you to come and have a little look because it's definitely different from the usual. I, uh, I really like it <laughs> and I hope you do too. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.